Hey, Justin. So as a girl dad, what are some lessons you hope your daughter could take from you? Um, so me and my daughter's mom are together, right? So it's, uh, you kind of have like these spurts of moments where you can like put stuff in them, you know what I'm saying? So like every time I get her like for the summer or spring break or Christmas break, you're like, okay, cool. We got to talk about this. We got to do that. So I think one is like just a friendliness because, you know, like she's cool. But like sometimes she'd be mean people. She'd be like, okay, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm like, girl, you better look people in the eye and say hello and be nice and stuff like that. Uh, oh, you taught, you taught her that. Yeah. What's so funny is because I didn't have my father there present to teach me that, you know who told me I got to look someone in the eye when I shake hands? Who? Jay-Z. He was like, you gotta yeah. look. He said, no, you gotta do it again. Like, look me in my eyes. And then she just flexed on me right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't know. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. What time you had? Jay-Z. Jay-Z. No. Because my, my father wasn't there, Jay-Z had to teach me a couple things. Like, <laughs> yeah. so, you know what? When she said it at first, I'm like, what's wrong? Was that? Yeah. Like, 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 yeah. She was like, she was like, Sean, like, yeah. Sean taught me, Sean Carter. Yeah. Oh, y'all call him Jay Z. I call him Sean. <laughs> 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 you got to do this too. That was, it was in 2017. We were uh, outside of a uh, Made in America the day before they was getting everything ready. Um, so but, you there before. Another story, but that's important because I didn't realize that that's where you learn it. Because I'm like, why, why did, why was I not doing it? Like, mm -hmm. so now when I'm talking, that's why I be looking y'all in your eye. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, that's important. That's a really important lesson. So. What are some What are some other lessons like as a girl dad? That, like you feel like it's really important that she know. How old is she too? She's twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, you know, not being so like, she's more of like a cooler child than I was in school. You know, so like it took me a while to get to where I was like any, any high, any kind of coolness. So like, but she's in that that position. So I'm like, make sure you treat people right. Um, because people remember that stuff. Like when people get older, they remember who was laughing at them, who didn't treat them right. Um, and just overall, just being a good person, like a solid person, because uh, you know today's world, like social media is really, really big in their their world too. Like, so it's just making sure that she can learn to lead and not just follow what everybody else is doing. Because you know, think about it, like today's world, everything's like do what's trending, right. and when you do what's trending, you're basically following. Yeah. And it's like, hey, I'm not mad with you following trends, but let's not be a person that's just following what everybody's doing just right. because it's trending. How is co-parenting? It's better. Yeah, it's better now. Um, I actually think in some ways we have a better relationship now than we did when we were together. Um, and so I think sometimes it's like us getting on the same page with even discipline. Because I'd be like, hey, listen, if you discipline her, we're on the same page. If I discipline her, we got to be on the same page. So that's been some work. Um, but for the most part, because we both care about her well-being, then that part is much better. Um, but I think when you remove out your disconnects as a couple, and you can just focus on the child, it makes it better. Because sometimes when you're together, you disconnect it and you're trying to raise a child that become, can become kind of tough. So um, for me, it's been a little different just because it's long distance. So like I said, you don't have like, so London's 12 now, right? So I look at it as like, okay, she'll be 18 uh, in six years. So I probably, get, I probably got five more summers. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. So I was like, okay, this summer number five, I got four more where I can really put something into you and it's like, okay, well, dang, what does that like, what does that look like over the next couple summers? And what do you really need to know before you stop listening to me, you know, as your father? So that's, for me, that's what's been kind of like uh, tough, like making that adjustment. So I try to see her as much as I can, talk to her as much as I can, FaceTime as much as I can, um, because, you know, you know, like they say, man, it's like the spiritual principle. Once you, you, you teach a child when they're young, they still don't walk away from it. And so I try to do that as much as possible and have her around people like my parents and her grandparents that will teach her stuff too. I like that. Mm -hmm. okay. That's good. And Strike, you talked about having a father that was present, but mm -hmm. he was absent at the same time. Can you tell me about that? Yes. <clears throat> my household was um, like I had an absent, uh, present father. Uh, dude, you know, he'd come in, go in his room, go to sleep, go to bed. You know, yo dad, I love you, nothing. Like I used to, you know, my like my like my friends would come over and, and I I joke with them sometimes. I'd be like, "Hey, yo, look, watch, watch this, um, a a a a a that I, I I love you," and and he he just wouldn't say nothing. Yeah. So it that it scarred me a lot. Um, it scarred me a lot. So, like, I would used to always yearn for that father figure, you know. So I you know I would just watch movies, you know. And then um, when I got into high school. 
like he kind of tried to like come around a little bit and um I was going to like uh he had left he had left the house around um middle school like he had just left I don't even know I don't even know the situation but he just left and you ever ask him like now no no he he actually he actually uh passed oh, so that. so what happened was um like towards uh like when I was leaving high school um me and him had just started like talking a little bit so um we we was like getting together to like really like hang like hang hang with each other and stuff and what happened was um I I had went around to his house and um he had passed away but like he was like face down and um, oh, you saw him no I didn't see him like nobody's like checked on him for like three weeks so he had to have a close guy I'm trying to get too like you know but he had to have close close casket and 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 what happened was um it didn't hit me like I was like emotionless like I'm I ain't never you know never really even had a I never even had a conversation with him like seriously I used to think that I was adopted because uh we were so like far removed um and what happened was um when his funeral came I remember like it just hit me like a ton of bricks and I just started crying I I don't I didn't even understand why I was crying but I think that one of the reasons why I was crying was because um it was nobody at his funeral like mm. nobody and, and 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 what happened was I was just like damn like what kind of life you got to live where everybody know who you is but nobody come to your funeral oh, so nice. so like when I had my kid mm. I was like I ain't never being like that like I'm gonna make sure that my kids know that I know that I love them know that I'm here for them no matter what um teach them whatever whatever it is I I I I, I learned along the way to and to always be fearless. So like, um, that's what I got. I mean, I'm still trying to figure this shit out myself. Like I ain't got all the answers. I don't know everything, but uh, I'm a go getter. I'm fearless, and I ain't never scared of nothing. And I make sure my kids know that too. So um, that's just. I want to salute you because. You could have easily used that as an excuse to be similar to your dad to your kids, right? Mm -hmm. And you did the exact opposite, yeah. right? You see what I'm saying? Right. So I, I salute you for, for for changing that, you know what I'm saying, and and, and making that end with him. I love a lot that. of people, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. Yeah. I love that, and I love that you saluted him because that's what brotherhood is about. Yeah. I love that. And, My brother. and what, yes, what happens is, is is what you said is like could have used it as a clutch, right? But in reality, what we realize that's happening is, is that that's the norm for our society as young black men. We didn't have fathers. Most of us didn't have fathers. And the dope part about this conversation and, and sitting at this table with you guys is saying like, yo, like when I look at and hear him, like the lessons and what he was saying about London is that we are getting to be the example, but we do have to understand that we behind the gun. Mm -hmm. Like this isn't normal. Not having a father isn't normal. Now we're getting to a point where we're starting to normalize fatherhood, positive fatherhood, active fatherhood that is actually like substantial in growth and we're helping develop the next generation. And y'all, I love that because y'all actually changing the narrative. And sometimes I see people make the excuse like, I didn't have a father, so I don't know how to be one. <laughs> so <laughs> to hear him say, he's, he's, he learned, you know? I need to be. Yeah, like exactly, and that's what I feel like. You can learn what not to do sure. because you didn't have it. You know what you wanted, yeah. so like you take what you wanted and you apply that. To me, I felt like the ultimate thing a dad could have done was take me fishing. I just wanted to go fishing with my father because I just used to watch all of these little mm -hmm. yeah. movies, and I'm like, all right, I want to go fishing with my dad. Mm -hmm. So but I, I do salute you, and I salute all of you. Mm -hmm. Take him fishing. That's what we plan on doing. Oh, y'all want to? Yeah, we got like well, a little, let, let uh, me come with my, my yeah, son. We got too, a girl dad group too. Like, I, and I think a girl dad group that together is just. You said a girl dad amazing. group. Yeah, just mm -hmm. like a girl dad group. So five, myself, Neo, Justin, um, Jeremy, Jeremy Anderson. Yeah, and um, Richie is my dog's a boy. So, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so like, I got one too. That have women, like I mean, like like girls. I thought that was one of the dopest things that I don't know whose idea it was, 
but it was incredible because we need that support. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I'm gonna say this: I got the, I, I got the cheat call um, as somebody who never, who just met his father, who hadn't had a father, somebody who's not a father yet. Um, I will say that my example has been my circle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just seeing Justin, seeing Marcus, seeing Jason, seeing David, him, great, his beautiful, like. I got the cheat code, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, I'm just so happy that I, I have the example in my face. I've had the example in my face with Jason for 22 years of our, our, our relationship, our friendship, and I just can't wait. Like, I cannot wait. I've seen the mistakes. I've seen, you know, what should have been done, what, what didn't, what wasn't done, what, and I'm just excited because yeah, I just got an advantage. Nothing's going to prepare you. Yeah, good. And here's, here's, here's why I say that because right now. We have a responsibility. Like when you about to go do something, you just get to go do it. Or like <laughs> you go on after something, right? Mm -hmm. But what about the guilt of I leave the house? Now I do my best to be home by like five o'clock every day. Mm -hmm. But it's the guilt of I only get to spend, even though they're in the house, mm -hmm. I spend a few hours a day with them. And then when you leave, you know. You almost gotta like sneak out the house because if they see you leave, they're both crying. Mm -hmm. There's there's a there's a real dad guilt there. Like, yo, mm -hmm. I'm going after it, yeah. but I can't go after it too it's crazy yeah. because I still need to spend that time. Absolutely. So like, there's nothing that prepares you for that. Uh, it's, 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 it's tough. Man. I ain't gonna lie to you, and I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I can honestly say, my dog is preparing me. I'm gonna be real with you. He has instilled responsibility. Nah, fuck all that. I'm sorry. I can't let you. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Way else. Anybody, anybody who has a dog knows nah, what I'm saying. I got a dog. Because <laughs> nah, 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 the dog can die and I'll get another one. Nah, dog. No. <laughs> My dog died. Throw me in the casket with him. Nah. nah we went out of time last week. We just let my dog get the vet. You can't do that. Nah, nah, nah. You can't do that. Nah, nah. I can stay the group. I understand what you're saying. My dog has his own room. I love my dog. He created instruction. You got to tell where you put him. He created some instruction. He had instruction to my life. Like, I have to go home with him for four hours. He got a point because I'm not literally getting another dog until I'm married. Because I'm not raising it's a not structure, another dog. person no. thing no. ever by myself. <laughs> I can't just book a flight and leave <laughs> town. Day, I'm not allowed to show my dog. That's what I'm allowed to say. Okay. I, got a dog, I can't leave town <laughs> without making sure I have arrangements for a sitter it, it, for my it's dog. Not, it's the not. difference, though, is because like dog sitters always say yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you people sit there and always be like that. They be like, nah, I can't do it tonight. If I'm the right price, that would be what I'm saying. But like, people, they be like, nah, I gotta make sure he's fed. I gotta take him to the doctor. That's uh, a, no, I gotta take him to the doctor. Nah. <laughs> my <laughs> man has never said I'm busy. Yeah. My mama will be my like, dog, most my, dog, he's my dog is 35 years old. He's with the housekeepers. His dog is with the housekeepers. No, no, he's 35 years old. He's, he's five. Son, right? But he's, he's with the housekeepers. He's grown. Well, yo, listen. You can't. You'll be home. You can't just leave the baby somewhere <laughs> and then go downstairs. No, Let's say this clip for when he has a child and ask him how he feels. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know why we're having this conversation now. Yeah. Like, you're, you're I like understand. You're understand. Dogs, no. whimper, you just let it balance the game. Yeah, 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 I'm, I'm being real. Wait, all right, y'all. So, wait, I got a question. So, your daughter is 17? No. No, she's 13 and I have a three year old. 13 and 12. And how old is your oldest? 12. 12. Um. How do y'all feel about dating? Like, how are y'all talking to your kids about dating? It's tricky today. Because first, you got to figure out, okay, hey, which way are we going with this thing? Which way are we going? Dang. First, bro, I, I didn't have so many and, and some not, conversations yeah, to find like, out yeah, you're just which trying way are we going. Like, hey, so, <laughs> and I'm not saying that you pushing either. Dang. You know, this is real careful how you guys say stuff today's world, but like, because, I mean, it's a lot, bro. It's a lot because it's like there's so much that can change for a lady. And I noticed just from dating, like, there's a lot of ladies I dated and, you know, they were touched by somebody or not touched by somebody. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes it was somebody they had a sleepover with or there, there's all these things that can happen from, like, this age till they're 18 that could change their whole life composition oh as a person. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I'm aware of that and then I I, I got to monitor conversations like who are y'all joking about what y'all joking about I checked her phone one time and it was talking about oh one of her friends was skipping school with a, a 17 year old I said oh wait a minute now 
Damn. Um, two sides of it. Y'all are, like, are in sixth grade, though. What is, he, what is she doing with a 17-year-old? You know what I'm saying? So I got to ask And that's, that's the other side. Like, you want to figure out which way they're going. But also, let's say they are, you know, hetero. Like, you don't want them to be one of the ones that you knew from high school. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's, yeah. that's going all the way on the deep end. Like, yeah. being tossed around. You know what I mean? Like, how do you... And I'm trying to be com so comfortable so enough where if you weren't going a different way, you would tell me, you know, like. How are you, how are y'all making, are y'all making those conversations? Like are, right now, I feel like the, the foundation should be set for those conversations. I don't, I never had a conversation with my parents like that. It's bad it's though. Yeah, it's bad, know. especially for a woman, right? Because I don't, I don't, I can't say for you as men, but for a woman, if you don't have those conversations, we're going to learn from our friends and they barely know what, they know what we know. So we want to make mistakes based off of that, where you rather learn from somebody telling you, like, look, if you give me the full game, then I'll make a better. So how decision. do you ask? How do you ask the young lady, like, hey, so um, which way are we uh, heading with this? So do you have a crush? <laughs> I would say, like, do you have a crush? Who do you like? Yeah, but they'd be like, no, 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 nobody. No, I think I think through conversation, like I found out through conversation, like you know, what she and she be having like little. And her mom is there too, and they be talking about like the boyfriend and stuff. Cause I, I'm glad I stay out of the conversation because I'd be like, nah, we're not doing that at all. Mm -hmm. But then you can't shield her because then she's gonna go do it anyway. I think right? you gotta go. I think you gotta go through the phone. You gotta go through the phone. Maybe you gotta right. violate the trust. Yeah. Go through the lights. Go through the lights. No, 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 no. Actually, you know what you need you to do? Violate you trust. Need to, I pay you, for it. Exactly. It's you need no. to actually put her iCloud on your phone so every text message they get. You her mom it. goes through that. I don't. Are you gonna have her her cloud in your cloud? So, I mean, it may hurt. She be her mom be telling me, her mom be telling me certain things. So you can have your text messages and theirs in your phone. Yeah, they all can come to you. I my friends did it with guys. Yeah, <laughs> I think that is a that, that is that a is violation. It's a violation. So but I'm not at a young age. You need to know what they're doing. It's no. so much stuff. Whoever that, that would be Milano marries, you. watch your back. She's going to wait. Change your iCloud every month. I'm telling you, man. Let me tell you something. I'm not going to hurt her. Whatever don't come to me, God do not want me to see. No, no. Then when it comes to my kid, I want to know certain connotations because I need to see what they're doing because. You can be so naive to your parents. Yeah. Did you log in? You log in and log out, or you stay logged in? No, I didn't do it. My friend did it. It was she stayed logged in. She literally seen everything that he was doing. It was all coming That's through. Crazy. Yeah. So I mean, I could we could talk about that offline, but I do think having those conversations is very important because you you should set the foundation. If you knew everything you were supposed to know about it, you might have not have made the same decisions that you would have made. When you have lack of knowledge, you're doing things based off of the little bit of information you get. So it's like, all right, whatever you want to do, if, if you're ready for this, we're going to the doctor. You're going to be educated. I'm going to get kind of, you're going to get everything so you can do it right. That's how I feel versus you, know you want to sneak and do it. Yeah. What's crazy is that <clears throat> so, so often, and I, 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 it's a gift and a curse in our community. We learn from what we didn't have. So, damn, this is, I don't even know I'm supposed to say this. I'm probably. But my oldest reached that point in life mm -hmm. and she started her cycle. Mm -hmm. And my wife had an emotional spat. Like, I remember that and my mom wasn't there oh. to tell me anything. I had to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. I had to wait till one of my friend's parents helped me with certain things and just my aunts and different people, but nobody really was there. And it was a moment where she's like, I'm like, I'm teaching my baby, at least I'm here. And I think as a father, like, I'm sitting there going, I don't, all right. And my daughter, like, you, you hear what happened? I'm like, yeah, it's part of life. Like, I'm not giving no emotion. Like, nah, it's a part of life. I'm like, yeah, it's part of life. You know? And she's like, yeah, it's nothing. So, but inside, I'm still shook. Like, like all right. This is like my baby's growing, right. and it's like it's crazy. But I just look at when it goes into that thing of we learn, so we teach from what we don't know, right. and that's the thing. It's like I want to get. I'm looking to get past that. Like Alex gets to get. He gets to cheat and get past that. Like he doesn't have to just learn from what he doesn't know right. because he got so many examples right. and things outside of his dog. Um, that we, <laughs> we'll get to later. But I think that that's something that I look at. It's like, I want us to, the examples that we share, 
and this is important about this conversation so it's just not off of strictly what i don't know it's like yo with the fatherhood and different things and examples it says like we got each other to like really grow from yeah, yeah. I, I, one more thing i would say with all of the stuff is like i feel like one us being a good example but i think as guys we got to hold guys that aren't in their child's life accountable to. oh yeah you know that's like because you know i'm listening to stuff and it's like because there are some people that i know and i mentioned it to them I'm like yo you gotta like there is no excuse for that like you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta be there yeah because nah, like, there's some people that's like you know i'm gonna just start over with the next one because you know they mom they got a hold of them and blah 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 and it, and it, it almost for some people i can see how it seems like it's um impossible to come back but i think some of the way we stop some of this hurt is you holding I know the people in, in my life that I overhear the conversation, I pull them inside of like, hey, we got to fix that. Because I don't even rock with people like that. It may sound crazy to me, but I don't, I don't think there's even no excuses for it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, you know? You know what? They're always, like Alex said, they can always seem like they're, because there, there are some women that are vindictive. Right, right. And that do cause problems. And I'm not saying just like Alex course. and stuff, but I'm saying. You got to go through that way. Yeah, but I, I mean, there's, I it depends. It's nothing should stop you from getting That's what I'm saying. Nothing. But it, it depends it depend on how you live. Like, if, like, yeah, like if, you, if you go through the court, I'm going to say yeah, something. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a fair assessment. I think the nothing should stop you from trying. Correct. Yeah. 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 There's some things that can trying. stop you. Yeah, yeah well, nothing sure. should stop you from trying. Yeah, I agree with that. If, so if my father wasn't there, at least I would have known that he tried. Yeah, That's not my circumstance, exactly. but at least I would have known that he tried versus like my mom yeah. said a few things to you and you just gave up. Yeah. I wasn't worth the try. Yeah. That's how yeah, I would 100%. feel. Right. That wasn't my circumstance, but that's how kids feel. Yeah. And I'm happy that you made, I love that you pointed that out. I think that was very impactful. Yeah. Um, because we knew y'all got to hold brothers accountable and y'all have to hold mothers accountable too. For sure. For sure. Um, but I like what you said earlier in the conversation and you kind of piggyback off of it, Alex. But you said you kind of, you don't know how your life would have turned out without him being. I have friends that are mad at their parents to this day, and they're very smart, they're highly educated, they're very successful, but they mad because their father wasn't there. And I understand that, so I'm not going to invalidate their hurt, but I'm like, look at the type of man that you are mad at. Imagine if he was there. Imagine how your life would have turned out. Because, yo, a toxic father, that right there, you you could have become, you could become him, you know? Or you may not be the man you are today, and sometimes I look at it as a blessing from God. Like what the devil meant for bad, God meant for good. He did not need you, that man in your life, you know? So I love that y'all touched on that. And with that said, I want to ask you guys a question. What do you guys think is better, an absent father or a toxic one? Like, would you rather have your father present and be toxic, or you rather him be absent and just not know? Absent. I'm going to go with absent. It's levels to toxic. I would, I would say toxic. There's levels. I would say toxic For because sure. I, th- I think if you if you take away a toxic, even if a man is toxic, but he's there and he helps provide in some way, you get a different woman. Mm. Like the the woman that has an absent father, she's a different woman. You know what I'm saying? She has to be a different woman because now she's got to be the disciplinarian. She's got to be the provider. She's got to be the protector. That's a different person that then. Neither one are it's good. That was some toxic. We talking about hitting and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's that's so abusive. Oh, so, so many different like caveats to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's I, hard to yeah I don't, I don't know. I would take toxic uh, what you said because the dynamics that get to be created. At least I get to learn from the good or the bad of seeing a man and a woman in a household, and I get to learn from that dynamic as well. Versus just a woman, and you get all you know men that are because I had a stepfather, and you could tell a man that's just raised by a woman. Mm-hmm. And you can tell men that come out of a house with me. So there's certain things. I had a toxic stepfather who was on drugs and stuff, but he taught me how to drive. Mm-hmm. He taught me, you know, different things, fighting and it's, it's things he taught yeah. me, right? So, and I get to see a dynamic, and I did get to see when you said a different woman, I did get to see a different side of my mom while they were together. And when he was actively, you know, doing okay. So I would take the toxic. Um, versus an absent just because of the, the contributions. Even if I learn from the good or I learn from the bad, I would rather have that dynamic. Yeah. Do you feel like some people, because I, I would say absent, and it's only because I've seen different things. I come from the hood and I've seen certain things where the toxic father instilled certain character traits and they, they're the kid that they were raising and they became exactly like that person. So mm-hmm. that would be my perspective, but it's based off of my experience. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so 
I know we're going to start wrapping up. We're going to go get some food. But I do want to ask, like, how are you breaking generational curses? Um, like, and how are you creating generational wealth for your children? Like, what do you feel like you're doing to break some generational curses? I'll start off. Um, because I was an accident baby, um, and the circumstances around me being born was, was, was like super like, it just wasn't right. I've been super, super intentional with not having an accident baby, being safe. Um, Shout out for being safe. Let's say that up. Safe yeah. sex, safe lives. Yeah, I decided at 16 that I wasn't going, I was going to try my best yeah. to um, not, you know, not be reckless and, and not be shooting the club up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, and, and, and I'm proud of myself for sticking to that. If me not having kids is 100% my decision. And, um, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm in this fairy tale to think that I can literally plan it. No, no, sure. no you can plan it. Sure. You can a lot of people do. So, um, you know, life is, is life. You can't, and nothing's going to be perfect. But I'm, I'm just really, really determined to have a healthy um, foundation when I decide to have that kid. I got a question for you. You are being very intentional about the child that you want to have and the family you want to yeah. raise and build, create. Are you intentional with the woman you're dating? Um, I haven't had, I haven't found somebody yet. But do you know what you want in a woman? Yeah. I do. Are you dating? So when you know what you want in a woman, once you are dating a woman, their first date, if they don't meet the traits and the characteristics you want in that woman, are you still dating them? Or I don't think that you can know off the off the rip. I, I think like it's, I think if you know what you want in a woman, or you know what you want in a partner, the question that you asking on that first date is going to tell you. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, I just feel like they like put say first, they best foot forward in the beginning. Um, I don't feel like you really get to know somebody until you spend some time with them. I think that's absolutely true. So, but yeah, I do nice. think if you make a list of what you want in a mm -hmm. woman. Yeah, when you go those. on that date and you like, and it don't have to be a superficial list, but it's like, right, I know what I'm mm -hmm. asking because I know what I'm not, I know mm -hmm. what I'm not settling for. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to be intentional about your family, you got to be intentional about that woman. Yeah. So to answer your question, yes, I am. It, it, I definitely have some checklists that if they don't meet certain things, I won't go on a date with them. Absolutely. Are <laughs> 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 okay. you going to go through the list? Of... <laughs> I got. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I go through the list if you want me to. No, no, no. That's another topic. That's another so the answer is yes. Love you, at this love point, you. at 40 years old, I definitely have um, different standards and things that I'm that I'm looking for that I won't entertain at this point in my life, 100. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I like that. Yeah. Um, anybody else want to answer that question on how you're breaking generational curses with raising your family? I mean, you can't teach them. I mean, you can't. Uh, I, I don't know if I. I don't know if I even believe in generational curses mm -hmm. or even generational wealth. You gotta do your very best to teach who you got, teach your kids the best you can to handle both their life, business, how they treat people, spiritual life, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just gotta do your you gotta do your best. <clears throat> so eighty percent of millionaires are first generation, which means wealth really doesn't travel well. It's like if I have it and I have a child, it's almost like they're they only have a 20% chance of keeping that baton going. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really, really difficult to line up the rest of your life you know, or for your, line up, prepare your kids because you can prepare them too much and they never go get, they never have no lessons to teach their kids. So I think you just got to do your very, very best as a parent. There's no rule book to it. There's no manual. Um, you just got to do your very best to teach. So yeah. me, how I'm breaking generational curses with my kid is explain them why to them. A lot of times, or in giving them options. Some, sometimes growing up, it's like, you just got to do what I say because I said it. And you don't understand why. I'm just doing what you say. And now it's like, this is why I want you to do it. I need him to understand. And I need him to ask questions because I want him to be a leader in this world. Sure. So that's how I'm doing that. And I'm also creating generational wealth because my son's going to be a millionaire when he's 30. But is that a good thing? It is going to be a good thing because I'm going to teach him about money. I'm going to educate him. I want him to be able to make decisions from... I want him to have the life that I didn't have. Not the experiences that shaped me who I am, but I do want him to have access to resources and financial wealth that I didn't but have. Does that cripple him? No, it's not going to cripple him. Because, because he works, it, he, my son it, works now. For sure. He's on it, payroll because he works, and he's going to always it's be one on the thing, work. It's one thing to work knowing that my man daddy got it, mm -hmm. right? But it's another thing to work because I got to figure this thing out and go get it. But that's how he's going to work. He's going to work because that's what, that's what I hope 
that's how I hope yeah. the Lord. Yeah. So it, that's a, I'm trying to do my yeah. best. It, it creates that. it creates something else too. You know what I'm saying? Like everything has like cause and effect. Right. I think about because you yeah. know you think about like there's some ladies that's like, hey, I'm gonna teach you how to be independent. So you don't need a man. And now you got a whole generation of women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like they, they don't, don't need, need a man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like mm -hmm. there, there's another part of it is like like I was thinking about like what if she don't want to be an entrepreneur? What if she want to be a teacher? You know what I'm saying like, what do I say about that? Or what if she want to, you know, so it's like what I'm trying to do myself to answer your question is like, I want to learn as much as I can because there's a lot of things that I've learned. That I'm like, man, my parents didn't even know this. Right. What would happen if they would have known that so they could have taught me that? And so at least I would have had the choice, right, right. you know? And so it's like, for me, it's like, okay, Justin, learn as much as you can and then explain as much as you can and then give her the, the best to be able to choose which option she wants to take, you know what I'm saying, without crippling her or forcing her, because because it's like in our community, because most of us don't come from money, that becomes our that becomes our whole life. It's like go get some money, go get some money. It's like okay, cool. What happened? What, what about the, the white folks? They got money and they still got problems. Right, right. Like my child gonna be rich. Okay, cool. They rich and they depressed and they. You know, they got different problems. Now they, they have, now they have access to drugs much earlier. Right, right. You know, so, you know kid, the white schools. They got everything. You see the Mercedes out there, but like when they bring you in, they're like, "Yo, these kids is in the bathroom getting high." Yeah. I'm talking about middle school, yeah. ninth grade, because they got it, mm -hmm. and they know they got it. Yeah, and they know that. Like, remember the video? Step forward if you never had to figure out where your next meal is coming from. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we had, I had to figure that out, and we yeah. had a, we went, we didn't live in the hood, but we, my parents wouldn't give me a thing. I had to go figure this out for myself. Mm -hmm. So. I think it's just it's just so hard to try to um, it's so hard to shape your kids' life. You just have to do your very very best. Right. Be an example. Give as much information as you can. Last story. This guy uh, I, I introduced introduced uh, I interviewed Patrick Vet David, and he said he was he had a friend. Him and his his friend and his daughter had the best relationship in the world. I'm talking about like BFS. They could talk about anything. And he said um, his daughter went out to college and came back was a whole another person. He, he prefaced it, was like, yo, you ever caught COVID? I was like, yeah. He said, where'd you get it from? I was like, I don't know. He said, yo, the same thing with his daughter. You don't know. Like you go, you, They go off to school and get influenced by something, and there's something in their head, and they change completely. So I think the only thing you can do is pray. Hmm. You, gotta, you, you wanna be able to say, I gave it my best shot. So, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's real stuff, bro. That's real. And, and if they, if they go a direction that you might not have anticipated, as long as you've done as best as you can, it's like you you kind of got to like not be too hard on yourself. I feel yeah, like right. you know what I'm saying. Like if you know you did everything you could, and, and they went left, not to beat yourself up that bad, because it's only but so <clears> much. It's only there's a time they got to be away from you. Yeah. The yeah. issue is is what's left. So like to answer your question, you say. How do I break generational curses? First is being intentional. I, I had my daughter on purpose. It was an accident. So my daughter was planned. I had her on purpose. And it's like, okay, so how do you start to break generational curses is that you identify what's the curses. See, I've already broken the curses because the curses that I faced was poverty. I, I faced all the things that come with poverty and the traumas of poverty. So I've already broken those those are no longer their battle. So my daughters having to be wealthy is not their battle. I don't know what their battle is gonna be. It may be traumas that I'm going to put on them that I don't know. Daddy wasn't there as much. Daddy yeah. didn't do everything that I didn't do. And so what I realized is that in order for me to kind of help with those curses is that, is that I want you to be a good person. I need you to be happy and I need you to be able to do the things that you desire, have the resources, have the information and tools to, to deal with this world. I don't care if you want to backpack across Europe. I just need you to have all the resources, tools, and be able to make wise decisions in life. It's not financial. It's satisfaction and development. Are you a, a good human being? And can you develop the life and maintain the life that you want to live that makes you happy, that doesn't hurt or cause any negative harm to anybody else in this world, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. When it comes to generational wealth, it's my money. 
<laughs> you got, nah, but with the generation of us, yeah, this is this below to me. Chris Tucker, that was a Chris Tucker. Just Chris Tucker, he's like my friend was like coming up at me at the rush. I was like, hey, we rich. He's like, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm I'm just, right. it I was right. He definitely was one of the ones that said. Somebody else said yeah. it. Definitely one of. But that's the thing when it comes to that though. The generational wealth, I think, is it's becoming, it's it's only focused on in the black community from people who broke. It only comes from those who, who the, the lack thereof. Like, I want a generational wealth. And it's like, like you said, it doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You're not passing it down for two or three generations. It, oh, the Rockefellers, you're talking about a 0.0001% of opportunities of how many times this has happened. This family, the Waltons, that name 200 of them and then name 10 that came <laughs> from our community. All right. What happens is, is that I'm not looking to shoot to get to. The, the top of the Empire State Building. I need to take it up in the five floors mm-hmm. to where we get out of the trauma side. We need to get out of and break free from trauma and poverty and everything that goes on in these toxic environments that we've been restricted to. And they can take it to the next level. I'm not trying to take it all the way up. I'm gonna be by myself. Right. And that foundation and the support system won't be there. The support system I have, my kids be able to grow up. Oh, I won already. Yeah. We won. I have friends. Oh, Cameron, this is Milano. This is her warehouse. This is her clothes. The examples that she gets to sit, this is her son. This is David Shands. He has a podcast. Look at this is his podcast studio. You get to see it. Oh, the kids that they around and influenced by, they, we're not going. Oh, this so-and-so, his mom ain't never home, so we're going to go to their house. And this is little JJ who got the gun and shoot people. Mm-hmm. I won already. I broke the curse. Yeah. Now, wherever you take it, I did my job. Awesome. Yeah, that was good. Good. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you. I do want to ask one last question, and then this will be a question for the audience as well. Um, what is one thing you would want to tell your father about how he made you feel? And what would you wish they had done differently? So, Alex. Why me? <laughs> <laughs> you want you want us to cry? Yeah. Set, the tone, wow. set the tone high. <laughs> Your dad, set it, set it, you said it, said it high. It's gonna be good. Yeah. You start. Uh, set it. Rec- what's what's your question? Time? Time? What's one thing you would want to tell your father about how he made you feel, and what's one thing you wish he would have done differently? He made me feel like I was a mistake, and I wish that. Um, I wish he would have uh, reached out and went and came and found me versus my friends having to go find him. Mm. Good. That's good. That's good. Um, I wish we just would have had a conversation, like just a man to man conversation. And of course, I wish, you know, he would have told me that he loved me. That's one of the things that kind of, it kind of hurt me a little bit. Because right when we was getting it, you know, to you know, get to know each other, it's like that's when you pass. So I commend you, like a lot, because you don't hold that resentment and um, anymore. No, and that's I think that's 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 like commendable, bro. And you're giving a man a fair chance, even though you, you like you don't have to. Mm-hmm. What I would say is, I would tell my dad I appreciate him for showing up. Because you start realizing how it is, how easy it is to disappear. And uh, he showed up when it was tough. He showed up when we had a little bit of food in the refrigerator. He showed up when we had a lot. He showed up when we was going on vacation. He showed up and had conversations when we couldn't go on vacation, when he put stuff on layaway, when he couldn't put stuff on layaway and get it out. You know, I, I think for what I learned from him was like, you show up even when it's tough. You work even when it's tough. Um, you communicate even when it's tough. The, the other side of that, I think, kind of goes to like the emotional side of like just, you know, kind of having more of that, you know, emotionalism. But, I, you know, at the same time as I've talked to him, uh, you know, he lost his dad when he was 13, you know, so it's like maybe you weren't in a situation in your life where you could even pull that out yourself. And so you never had it. Um, and so I think, you know, probably to some of the generational curse stuff, probably for me, it would probably be more emotional to anything. Like, how can I show that emotional side more? But um, all in all, man, being a father is tough. And so I think if you have one, you know, be grateful for what you can do. And 
you know, even listening to, to Strike, I'm gonna call some of my friends now. It's like, you know, maybe you might have to initiate the conversation because you never know how long you have. You know what I'm saying? You never have long. Dang, even me, I'm thinking about like, dang, what's the stuff I need to talk to my dad about? Because sometimes you feel like you got forever to have those conversations and you don't. So, you know, this was good for me for that to just, you know, showing up. But now, you know, it's a responsibility of mine to, to learn what I can. Yeah. I love that. What I wish, what I could, how my dad made me feel. Um, he made me feel like I was raised on the the, the, the glory stories. <laughs> so he just made me feel like like you gotta be that dude. Yeah. Like a hundred percent, you gotta be that dude. If it's anything that I can change or something, like I wish he would have did. Um, I just wish his circumstances wasn't what they were, him being incarcerated. The only catch side to that is that he he doesn't wish it was different hmm. because he asks for Allah <clears throat> to take him out of the circumstances he was in. And he accepted it and said either I was going to die or I was going to be here. And this is what he chose for me. Hmm. And him accepting that gave me peace hmm. to accept his situation for what it is. Same with my father. My my father would say, like, it was either jail or dead death. He would have been gone. So he is happy that he got sent to jail because he literally would have been dead a long time ago. Uh, my dad made me feel uh, empowered, amazing, always... He made me feel like I could just figure anything out. Mm -hmm. So he never give me the answer to a question. Like I'll ask a question, and they'll be like, "What you think?" And then it will analyze the conversation. You know what I mean? So he always wanted me to think, like think through it. And I never, ever felt like he did. I never, not one day, felt like he didn't love me. You know what I mean? Like even the the logical side is. If I do something wrong, he'll send me to my room and he's gonna discipline me. But every single time, we had a conversation first. You know what I mean? He didn't want me to think that he was disciplining me because he didn't like me. I never, like, I was never confused about it. He just didn't like what I did. Right. But he showed me that he's disappointed in me and, like, you're better than that, mm -hmm. right? He would still discipline me, which I would have. Love to just cut the conversation, like yo, bro, just beat me, bro. Like now nah, I feel bad, yeah. and I we'll feel bad. You know what I mean? That talk was put away, bro. Just beat me, and still know I had to do this. Yo, it happened every <laughs> single time. I'm like, let's just get it over with, bro. That's hilarious. But I can imagine your dad <laughs> off of how you speak and everything that you grew up through, because you do it to people now, and that's why you're great at podcasting. Mm -hmm. You're the one that's like, like nah, don't. I want to sit down and talk to Dave, but we don't want to talk to Dave because we know he's going to ask a question and you got to clarify it and it has to make sense yeah. to him. Yeah. And you're going to have to make it make sense. I'm not going to let it go. For sure. 100%. It has to make sense. Yeah. That's incredible. I, you know, it wasn't even something that I wish my dad would have done. I wish I would have been more, I wish I'd have reached out more mm -hmm. before he passed. Oh, he and we like, yeah, yeah, he'll call and I was just busy. You know what I mean? Mm. I, I, I'll hit you back and it'll be the next week before I had a back and you know what I mean? He just, mm -hmm. a perfect example of a father. Yeah. That's a blessing. Yeah. That's a blessing. And I would just say that one thing I will tell my dad is I wish he made better decisions. Um, but I understand that his circumstances, so he yeah. didn't have the best circumstances, so he just made decisions being a product of his environment. And that's why I always try to tell people, like, I'm not a product of my environment. I'm a product of my decision. So, sure. Because I didn't want to be like him. Yeah, sure. um, and what I wish he would have done differently, I just wish that he understood his worth. I wish he knew who he was. Yeah. Like, he never been on a jet. He never been on a yacht. He never been to another country. He never experienced life. Mm -hmm. He only knew this box that he was in. And he was the man in that box, like your father was. I was infamous for being his daughter. Mm -hmm. And he said that he's... He's famous for being my dad. That's great. So I changed the narrative. Everybody like, wow. oh, I don't know your daughter. She's so great. She's so positive. Like everybody in the jail is like That's praising cool. him for being my father. And before it was like, I was infamous for being his, his daughter. daughter. Like don't touch her. Like mm. she's That's well cool. protected, well, yeah, well respected. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but so what I want the audience to do is I want you guys to 
write down one thing that you would want to talk to your father about and how your father made you feel and what's one thing you wish that they would do differently. You can write it down or you can make a video of yourself saying it and you can decide whether to share it or not, but just getting it out of your head and writing it down on paper, it will be just a release and a weight off your shoulder. Yeah. And sometimes you may not get the answer or the response that you're looking for from this person, but I don't want that to hinder you from knowing who you are. Cause a lot of times people only do what they know and Sometimes it's not in your favor, but I don't want you to, I don't want that to affect you. So looking around at this table, you can see so many different successful men and everyone has a different story. Some people had the greatest role model. Some people had an absent father. Some people didn't know their father at all. Some of their, some of them lost their fathers, but they all decided to stand up to be great men. And I just hope that this show was truly as impactful as I hoped it to be. I hope it changed a life. I hope it changed the narrative. And I hope that it makes someone want to be a better person, a better man, a better father. Thank you guys. And now we can break bread because Strike made us some really great food. That's the reason I came for it. <laughs> <laughs> that food, I need some of that good food. Mm -hmm.